All right, welcome everyone. Um, this will be the last video here in this uh, series that will discuss the padded structure. So if you just uh, came across this video, not on the playlist, uh, I'll add a link. Um, please do check out the uh, the rest of the series because it really does build upon each other. Uh, okay, so for the sake of time, I'm gonna just jump right into the discussion. Uh, I have a sample program here. We're looking at the structure and in this case, it's the, uh, I guess, the second structure that I defined, but the only, the last structure that we'll discuss. I called this padded structure, and the idea here is just to help understand and explore how the, you know, the memory used for the members can affect the layout. In particular, how the compiler can then, in order to maintain an alignment, that four byte, even, you know, even byte boundary alignment can add some padding. The second structure, padded two struct, don't, that's just there if you wanted to continue to explore and, and work uh, with this sample program, looking at the disassembly after you've compiled it to better understand and, and sort of anticipate what the, uh, you know, what the structure might look like after it's compiled. So this first structure then, what I've essentially done is just change the order to force the compiler to add, uh, add some padding. So I have member one, which is char A, that's only a single byte. That'll be at offset zero. After that, I've defined short B. And what would happen then is with short B followed by int C, that would mess up the alignment if padding wasn't added. So this would be at offset zero. This would then be at offset one. This would be two bytes. This would then be at offset three. And so you can see where this would then start to, to violate that even you know, four byte boundary. And so then what the compiler will do is it'll add one byte here. So that way char A can be the first byte offset zero. Then there's that padding byte. Then there's the short at offset two and three. So this will then end on a four byte boundary. And then this keeps those aligned because the int and then the int pointer will both be four byte values. So the result of that then is that adding of that padding byte. And the fact that we can't just simply add for the size uh, char plus a short plus an int plus an int. So one byte, two bytes, that's three bytes, uh, plus the eight bytes. It's not 11 bytes. It's actually going to be a size of 12 bytes. Okay. Um, very similar here. If you, if you think about then that concept of, of maintaining that four byte boundary or those even offsets, then this is just another way of exploring that. The instantiation of that structure, we'll go back to using malloc just because it'll be a little bit easier to recognize all of the members will be um, offsets from the base of the allocation. So you can see uh, we're back to using the arrow operator, uh, dereferencing those members, populating each member with some arbitrary data, uh, E hex AA decimal 44. And then this last one, the reason that that local variable Z was declared in the first place was that uh, that way I could I could use the the ampersand to provide an address. Uh, so that's the address operator uh, to populate that member. Okay. Otherwise, they're just going to be populated in order. Okay. Going over to Ida. All right. In the last video, we discussed that stack based structure. So now we can move on to the final structure. We have a call to malloc. We have a push twelve. Right, so that almost immediately confirms the size of the object based off of the discussion that we just had. So there is certainly going to be that extra byte for, for padding. Now, we've gone through analyzing these members in the very first video, so I'm not going to go through that again. Um, instead, what we'll do is, uh, and I've also talked about adding um, the custom structure in the first video as well. So I've already added that again just for the sake of time, and you can see that we have our char member, our padding byte, our short member, our int, and then our int pointer, right? So if you, so I didn't, I didn't, you didn't necessarily, like, again, oftentimes when you're reversing, you're not gonna have the source code. So you could create this member based off of the analysis and the analysis that we've done very similar in that first video. Um, when you're getting started, having that source code can help because then you can compare your analysis with the source and you can see what the, you know, what the compiler might've done you know, in this case, you might not have expected initially that padding byte um, and then better understand what's what's going on and, and kind of connect the dots on the two. That's that's a whole reason for these these sample programs is to help anyone who is, is just learning and starting because there's a lot of little tricks and little nuances and stuff that you can encounter. Um, so that's already defined. And I think the easiest way now. OK, so we, we've got this. 
we know that the, the call to malloc is going to return a pointer to the memory that was requested the size uh, you know an allocation of that size that's moved into var 8 and so now we can change our var 8 and we can call that a, a padded structure okay and we can take this one step further then and we want to apply the structure then to that memory so i'm going to go and do the y shortcut key on that local variable in the decompiler window and we'll make this a padded structure pointer hit ok and you can see now that that updated the results here in the decompiler view right so if we wanted to just perform our anal analysis at this point using the decompiler view uh, then or the pseudocode view then that's that's all we would need to do if we want to add to this the disassembly listing we have you know, right click on the use of that first member and now we can apply the structure offset so we'll just go through I'll just go through and add um, the, add those offsets I'm going to use the T shortcut key and there we go right so very similar now the output or the, the listing view is is updated with those members in terms of that padding byte, uh, you'll see that we are moving. You know, so here's where uh, we move this uh, 65 into the char member. And then we have the short member. So you can see that there is never a direct reference to that, uh, that byte at offset one. Offset zero is the char member. Then we move to the short member. And so you might be you know, building this structure, not knowing what it initially looked like and you would have to account for that in your analysis and so you just would have to recognize that this was a byte and that this then jumped to the short and then there's that padding byte that maybe it's padding maybe it's just a byte that isn't used we don't we don't necessarily know without the source or without really performing the full analysis of the program and, and here you know we have what we think is complete code and it is because we've seen the source but if this were a more complex program that could just actually end up being a, a short member that's never used um, or at least we never find its usage in our analysis so again there's a few few little gotchas there um, but it's okay it's okay that if you as you're building these structures if you don't have a complete view if we never saw that that padding byte being utilized and we just left it let's say instead of having it called padding we just we said that this is an unknown unknown byte you know, like that's fine. We we don't know what it's for. It's not utilized at this point. There's it's not really relevant to our analysis. So it's okay to have that. Um, in terms of of getting the pointer, uh, this is just a little bit of assembly. You're going to have the the int z. So that's the local variable, and the lea instruction is going to then calculate the address for that that local variable. So it's going to be an address on the stack that's moved into eax before this is moved into then our our int point pointer member so it looks like I, I uh, looks like I had selected the wrong value there so uh, that that um, annotation was incorrect All right so that's just how you can see that pointer being moved into that location for that structure uh, and storing the pointer there okay so this wraps up the video discussing structures what they are uh, and then how to identify them and create them in Ida Pro certainly this isn't everything that you can and will you encounter so this isn't everything you can do with structures in Ida and certainly not everything you'll encounter but hopefully this is a good starting point for those of you that were interested in knowing how to do this if you have any questions comments ideas for future videos please feel free to reach out to me comments are open um, I'm you know available through other social media channels as well so don't hesitate to send me a message and I'll do the best I can to include those topics in future videos. Um, until then, though, hope you enjoyed the series, and I look forward to uh, you know seeing you and providing you future content.